Hey everybody, Michael Schneider, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 1st, and today we're going to take a look in detail at the system rolling through the Pacific Northwest Sunday on in through Monday early next week. Right now we're looking at the 500 millibar winds here. I've depicted them on the European model. You can see how they really peak as they move south of Alaska here. The cyclone is going to be maturing as it makes landfall, but it still should be pretty strong as the gradient continues well inland. Should bring pretty strong winds region-wide, maybe some high winds for some areas too. And it's going to really highlight portions of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and British Columbia. Seattle looks like it's going to get a good shot of wind with this too. We'll look at those speeds in detail here. But let's put this into motion. This is 18,000 feet. And you can see that jet stream just plow into the North American continent here. This is on a global scale. This jet stream is just a big boundary of uh, the air masses between the north and the south. So check out this jet stream. It really powers up as it moves across the Gulf of Alaska and just barrels into the Pacific Northwest here. So we're going to take a look at that in a little bit of detail here coming up. And then we'll take a look around the rest of the country as well. Not much to speak of. A couple severe weather threats out there. We'll take a look at the system moving through tonight and the one just ahead of this main storm here uh, coming in Sunday night into Monday. So taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery now you can see this weak frontal system is going to bring light precipitation across the region a little bit of snowfall a little bit of a convergent zone through saturday morning bringing some snowfall to the washington cascades as well and some snow for the higher terrain elsewhere also off especially off under the rockies of idaho and montana you can see this colder air setting up out here over the pacific ocean back here is where that jet stream is and this is the the marker of what's to come here. This thing is just going to come barreling across the Northeast Pacific Ocean and slam into us here. So taking a look a little bit closer here, you can see that frontal system again, just light precipitation amounts with this. You probably see the high clouds moving across the region now, but not a major storm going on tonight on it tomorrow morning. Rest of the country, you can see there's going to be some severe weather here as this front is still draped across Florida here. Marginal risk right now. There is a marginal risk for Texas portions of Oklahoma here too for some severe weather. Shouldn't be anything major right now. And you can see here not much going on. A couple freeze and frost warnings across portions of the East Coast there. And not much to speak of otherwise. All the action is going to be pointed at us for this coming weekend and on into early next week here in the Pacific Northwest. And this just kind of highlights where that marginal risk of some severe weather is. Just a tiny bit of a tornado threat down there in Florida. Mainly just a wind threat there through Texas and Oklahoma. Um, but that'll change here in the next couple of weeks as severe weather is going to get ramped up here as we go through the later part of April. Now looking at what we can expect for today. Here's the NAM 3 km just kind of showing that light precipitation move across the region. You see that convergent zone drape across the central Puget Sound there. It's going to enhance snowfall rates a little bit across the cascades there in the higher terrain before the next system starts to move in here as we go on in through sunday and monday but we'll look at that in some detail here coming up too just wanted to show you there is some snowfall amounts coming with this system you can see them piling up through the cascades a little bit more here and some for the higher terrains of the rockies of montana idaho and a little bit for eastern oregon as well a little bit for the oregon cascades and the bc as usual gets a little bit more out of this system as well and now we're going to take a look at the gfs here so you can see how this low pressure just it starts to develop here and really rolls across the Gulf of Alaska. The GFS has been the model that's been on the weaker side with this storm. It's still a potent storm, but it's not quite as dynamic as what the Canadian or the European or the NAM is even showing now. The NAM is now coming into range with this system, but you can still see a powerful gradient sets up across the region here. So you probably get some gusts in the lower 40s for Seattle and probably up over 50 miles per hour still in eastern Washington portions of eastern Oregon with that too, as well as southern British Columbia. There's going to be some favorite spots for some high winds as well as this storm system barrels through and you'll see that low pressure kind of continue on through the upper Midwest there. Now taking a look, here is the NAM3 cam. There's Washington over here. Here's Alaska, the Gulf of Alaska here. Now you can see this system kind of stretch across here. And this is the one we're watching here. Look at this dynamic storm just set up. And it matures here, and it st stays pretty strong for a, a quite a while here. And it's still a potent storm when it makes landfall here on Vancouver Island. As you can see by these pressure gradients that go across Oregon, Washington, into southern British Columbia, a really strong pressure gradient sets up here. These are two millibars each. So there's... There might be a 9 millibar Seattle Portland difference there, which would bring upper 40 mile per hour winds potentially. As you can see, that system eventually move off through central Canada here. Now, here's the jet stream, 500 feet here, NAM 3KM again. And here goes 
this is the system moving through today and tonight. You can see just the little troughing there. And then the much more powerful jet stream sets up over the Gulf of Alaska here in the Northeast Pacific and just barrels right into us here in North America. And you can see that cyclogenesis on the north side of that. That's why the storm system is not going to weaken too much. That gradient's going to remain strong and let this thing dive right into us. And it's good. that's why it's going to bring some pretty good winds to eastern portions of Washington and through Idaho and Montana as well. As you can see, that jet stream just very powerful as it moves in over Oregon. Now here is the NAM3 cam, the NAM3 cam again here, just kind of showing the temperatures here. You can kind of see the warm field of this system as it advances. It's going to pull warm air up in front of it, kind of a classic signature of our mid-latitude cyclones as they move through the Pacific Northwest here. And then you can see a barrel into uh, the Vancouver Island there in British Columbia. But let's take a look at the European kind of pegging some pretty good snowfall amounts. These are 24-hour snowfall totals. You can see the system moving through tonight through to tomorrow kind of highlights central cascades there with that convergence zone activity. And then we go on into the later Sunday night. And look at the snowfall totals just really pile up here. This is the latest European run as of last night, 10 p.m., uh, 11 p.m., I should say, daylight savings time. Uh, but you can see some really good totals here. Some areas getting over three feet of the higher terrain there. And looks like the passes are going to get a pretty good shot of snow here over a foot, looks likely, with this system. And this isn't done yet by this point, too. That We're still getting strong onshore flow. So as we go into the future a little bit more, in fact, let's do that right here. You can see it continue to pile up a bit more as we go through Tuesday morning getting up towards, I mean, some of those areas have over four feet, but that, that would be very isolated locations and much higher terrain. But you see the Olympics get a good shot of snowfall. The Cascades of Oregon, British Columbia is going to get their fair share, as well as the Rockies of Idaho, Montana, Northeast Oregon as well. It's a very dynamic system is going to sweep through the region here on Monday. Now, taking a look at the 850 millibar temperatures here, so you can see the chilly air move over us from the system now, and then you'll see this really cold air here. Here's the next, here's the big storm out here. You can really see it pull up the warm air in front of it in the warm field of this mid-latitude cyclone. Kind of an interesting feature there. But then it just really pours the cold air in across the region here. So we play that again. You can see it just launched this cold air into the region. This is going to extend further on in uh, towards the Montana area as well. Let's go ahead and check that out. Also, you can see that cold air just really overtake the region there well into Montana as we're getting some pretty chilly temperatures here aloft as we go in through the period. And there's a thunderstorm potential as we go in through the day Monday behind this frontal system too. It's going to usher in quite a bit of cold air. It's going to get unstable behind the front. So what's going on here? You can see this lobe of cold air is now moving off of Siberia here. And it's going to just set up over the Pacific Ocean. Put this in motion. You can see that cyclogenesis develop on the leading edge of this cold air as it moves across the Pacific Ocean here and just blasts into British Columbia. And this is what's bringing our big windstorm. And look at that, just that setup of this really cold air just over, over the Gulf of Alaska here. So if we look at the wind speeds here, you can see how that gradient just sets up there. The really cold air marked by that subtropical air to the south sets up the really powerful jet streams. And that's what a jet stream is. It's the boundary between the polar air and the subtropical air to its south. So now we're going to take a look at the European. This is a, last night's run here. You can see here we have that weak system moving through tonight. Just, you know, it doesn't show up much on the surface map here, but then you can see our system just racing across and a very dynamic 976 millibar low. Looks like it's going to make landfall just north of Vancouver Island. Set up a really powerful gradient here on the south side of that. You can see right there, Seattle, Portland looks like about eight millibars, but some pretty tight gradients on the east sides too. And look how this system just kind of redevelops on the backside of the Rockies there too. Just kind of showing how this cold air just launches into the continent here. A lot of times these will... These cold air will spill out. This cold air will spill out over the Gulf of Alaska, and these systems will move up here, and they will weaken rapidly as they move over inland areas here. But this one, this gradient is powerful. It's going to reach well inland on North America here. Now checking out wind speed. So this is last night's run. <clears throat> now we're getting into Sunday night here. You notice how the wind picks up. The coastal regions start gusting over 50 miles per hour here. You can see Seattle at 45 miles per hour by Monday morning. The higher trains, the Cascades are really feeling the effects too, especially the east slopes. Eastern Oregon can have places over 50 miles per hour, uh, some isolated spots, eastern Washington. And then look, as we get into Monday afternoon, as this gradient really sets up across the region here, you're getting up towards 50 miles per hour in Seattle. The 
coastal areas, they're going to peak out over 50 miles per hour. And you can see much of eastern Oregon and Washington, some of these areas are getting up towards 60 miles per hour as the storm blasts through. And this is no doubt going to lead to some isolated areas which with winds even higher, possibly up even towards 70 miles per hour, I'm guessing, in some areas. As you can see some of these pockets of that showing up here in some of the higher terrain through eastern Oregon as well. We'll look at some of those individual stations here in a moment too. Now, here's the most recent one. That was yesterday afternoon's European. Let's see what the consistency, how it's doing here. This is Sunday evening. You know, so winds start to pick up here for the coast. And we go through Monday morning here, 45 for Seattle. Pretty similar to the run before that. So the European has pretty good agreement. And then you'll see as we go into Monday afternoon, this is even stronger, actually. You see some more areas. Spokane looks like it's higher, up towards 60 miles per hour. There might be need some high wind warnings in effect for portions of eastern Oregon, eastern Washington. Portions of Seattle getting up towards 50 miles per hour. You can see down towards Olympia, Shelton perhaps gusting over 50 miles per hour. And the San Juan's getting pretty gusty as well as the coastal areas are probably going to be in the low 50s also. And the higher terrain, the back crunchy too, especially east slopes, you know, blew it past. Portions of Lake Chelan are really going to get hammered by this storm with this gradient that's setting up. Now here's the, the Canadian model here too. So let's check out what its jet stream looks like. As we go on through Sunday here, you just see this monster jet just aimed at North America, the Pacific Northwest more specifically through Monday afternoon. This is when the storm should be just raging across the region here as a powerful gradient sets up here. But that jet stream diving in there, fairly unusual that a, a jet stream that powerful makes it that far inland on this. It usually troughs out a bit more and then it, the trough kind of moves through the lower 48. But this thing is just not wasting any time. It's barreling right in. A very winter-esque feel to it and this is a canadian model here and you can see the system really similar to the european here dives this 976 low into british columbia and that powerful gradient is going to set up across portions of oregon washington idaho montana as this thing just barrels through the area here and as we go on into monday night this is when the the really strong winds are going to be affecting eastern washington oregon now this is Seattle Tacoma. This has been trending, you know, pretty. This has been trending upwards. You can see the mean is around 48 miles per hour for SeaTac, and you can see that burst of wind on Monday morning with the arrival of the system, and then as the gradient sets up, as the system passes through central British Columbia and across Canada, there this gradient might bring our strongest winds later in the afternoon on Monday. You can see there's about. 18 members there's actually more members there's probably about half the members show 49 miles per hour or higher for SeaTac. this is for bellingham you can see they're going to get a nice shot of wind their mean is right around 49 miles per hour kind of favoring the monday morning time frame as they're a little more susceptible to the southeast winds going through there this is for whidbey island upper 40s as well is their mean it starts Monday morning also because they're more susceptible to the southeast winds. And that gradient, the way it sets up, won't, is not quite as favorable for them as it is for portions down towards the central sound. This is for Fairchild Air Force Base. This is eastern Washington, west of Spokane. Look at this. They're well up into the 50s here. And so there might be a high wind warning um, issued or a watch issued here in the next day or so for portions of eastern Washington. A really powerful wind going to roll through here this is for spokane just a little bit off to the east very similar this is the story look at this i mean spokane's going to get bigger winds out of this system because of that how that system is lining up how the gradient is lining up but it's still windy enough there for astoria um well into the mid 40s here for the the mean ensemble and burns eastern Oregon here. Look at this. Lower 50s. All the ensemble members basically have you 50 plus miles per hour, just a few into the 40s. And even one, you know, severe wind or high wind comes at 58 miles per hour. So that's when you, if the National Weather Service thinks you're going to get 58 miles per hour or higher, they will issue a high wind watch and then a high wind warning. So there are some ensemble members that have a high wind scenario with this for Eastern Oregon as well. This is for Pendleton. You can see up towards 50 miles per hour as well with some higher ensemble members there. Tillamook, Oregon, going to get a pretty good shot of wind there, a little bit further north, uh, a little bit further south than Astoria, but the gradient is going to set up a little bit better there as this thing rolls up here, apparently. And Monday morning, and then you see another shot of wind kind of there for Monday afternoon. So dynamic storm for Tillamook, Oregon as well. This is Tri-Cities, Eastern Washington. The ensemble mean is at 50 miles per hour. So there's definitely going to be at least wind advisories there for Eastern Washington and Oregon with the storm system. 
This is Portland. You can see where they're spared the major blow. The ensemble mean is just below 40 miles per hour here. <clears throat> and you can see some of the members have a bit of a higher guess in here. One has 51 there, but generally less than Seattle, less than the coastal areas. Portland should be one of the more tamer areas for this storm. So just wrapping things up, you can see the weak system moving through the area today and tonight. A little bit of a convergence zone moving across Puget Sound tomorrow morning. Some mountain snows across the region, but generally light precipitation amounts with this system. Light wind amounts also. And then the next storm is already starting to develop out over here in the Pacific Ocean. This powerful jet stream is going to really usher in this cold air mass, bring a strong low pressure system just north of Vancouver Island. And some potential for some high winds across much of the region here. Some really good mountain snow is going to usher in a lot of cold air. Some thunderstorm potential behind it. So very active dynamic storm system. Looks like it's coming Sunday night through Monday for the region. So we'll talk about this again tomorrow. We'll see if we can get the GFS a little bit more in line with the European model on the strength of the slow pressure system. The Canadian is also on the side of the European model as well. So and so is the NAM. So it looks like a pretty powerful storm coming up here for Monday. And we'll look at that again tomorrow. We'll pin down some more details and we'll get a little bit more in depth with that as well. So I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.